All right, so today is World Sleep Day. <laughs> yeah. AK was planning to sleep at 7.45. Yes. So really? Ua was bragging about how <laughs> sleep is very good. Sleep is this. I said, okay, Ua, how about I sleep at 7.45 p.m.? <laughs> All know? right, so let me say, um, um, so for the slogan for the 14th annual World Sleep Day is regular sleep, healthy um, future. So World Sleep Day is a call to all sleep professionals to advocate and educate the world about the importance of sleep for achieving an optimal quality of life and improve global health. I mean, I, under, see, I, I, I totally agree. AK, I've seen people drop dead. It's, and by the time they checked, was lack of sleep. Yeah, um, it could lead to fatigue, Everything. exhaustion. And Ua, I know the power of sleep, especially a power nap. Mm -hmm. Like if you have really been working Stressed. hard and then probably maybe you have to do some mental work and you can't just think beyond a certain point or sleep, just take a power nap if you can, yeah, usually one hour, but if you could do like two hours. <laughs> And you wake up, or if you can even do more. You but know, you like when you guys up, ask me, like, what's the topic refreshed. for tomorrow? When I tell you that, I'm thinking, <laughs> what I usually do. Because, you know, because we, we, we read a lot. So mm -hmm. at some point, your, your it's just brain, so heavy. And coupled with our online school that we are doing, so your brain gets so congested. I'm so telling you. Really, that power nap, it, it does, does magic. I, I can tell you, it does magic. Mm -hmm. If you haven't tried it, please try it. Mm. If you're a writer, you have writer's block or whatever you're doing, especially for mental activity. Mm -hmm. If you sleep and wake up, you're looking for strategy mm -hmm. ideas. Once you wake up, it's a flow. <laughs> <laughs> Do we have Tammy there now? Ah, okay. I think we're still having trouble finding Tammy. All right, so, t um, um, AK, what did you find for us in the news? Today? Okay, so today in the news, I, I tried to look for something that we're not tired of hearing about. So I know that um, some of us are aware of the death of the Tanzanian president, John Magulufu. I hope Magufulu, yes, let me get it properly. Mm. And I want to actually, um, so if you're watching from Tanzania or anywhere, please accept my condolence on the loss of your president. Mm. But I also want to talk about how that has opened an opportunity for Tanzania to have the first female president. Mm -hmm. I, <laughs> well, I feel sad clapping because now because somebody died too. No, see, let me tell you something. I know. Mm -mm -mm. I'm not. I'm not happy. Yes, yes, we get that. That's why I had to state. I'm first. not clapping that because I mean somebody died. The truth is, if they didn't want her to be president, they would have still found a way. Well, you know, the, the thing is, Uwa, yeah, because I, she's she's vice president yes, and all of that. I think but that she would struggle. She would struggle with that thing because this did not just happen because she was elected. It happened by chance. Something happened and it brought it to the fore. So I. But think, do you think she was prepared for it? I think she is, but you know why? Because I think she's been in public service for a well, very long time, and I, that's what I want to. And maybe that's why the story speaks to me. And then it's Women's Month. We have to be in places where if the position. Because you know, we talked about idea. it. Yes. If she wasn't in the position, we would not have recorded, you know, this unprecedented event in the country. Why well, not wishing for anybody's no, death? No, not at all. But the truth is that be positioned, be positioned, women and be have ready. to be positioned and yes. be ready. So when we're talking about gender equality, when we're talking about, you know, having a voice, be in a place where if the mic comes to you, you would have a voice. Thank you. Know, you. Your voice would because echo if on she the wasn't competent, no matter how, you know, um, well, maybe she's supposed to be. They, they will just find one reason to tell you that no. Well, it like, what work. I'm saying is, let's pray for her that time. She, no, actually, she would, she would, she would well. actually leave the turn and get well. the support that she needs. She do well. I hear we have Tammy now. Congratulations. Um, congratulations to Tanzania. Yeah, congratulations to Tanzania and mm -hmm. congratulations to Sama Hazan. Yes. Congratulations. And congratulations to women all over the world. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, Tammy, are you there? Hi, Uba. Hi, Tammy. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. So we are having a lot of uh, network issues today with your network. Happy um, but... World Sleep Day. <laughs> well, no problem. Hope you so got enough rest today. You said? I said hope you got enough rest. Like well, in commemoration of the World Sleep Day. Hope you had enough time to sleep in. <laughs> Not yet, Timmy. I've not slept. <laughs> no, I planned the whole weekend to catch up with sleep. I have to catch up on the sleep. But how are you? How's your week been? Fine, fine, thank you. All right, so because we've lost a lot of time, what did you find for us in the news? All right, so the National Judicial Council 
recommends appointment of 26 judicial officers. And this is coming after the NBA president expressed displeasure over the procedure adopted for the screening of the, of the proposed judges of or rather justices of the Court of Appeal. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, there's a quote here by the NBA president that I'd like to read out. He was present at the virtual screening of the judges, and he said that what I saw and experienced at the NJC meeting on the appointment of judges to the Court of Appeal left me aghast. Mm -hmm. At a point, I, as a judge just come, attendee, had to ask, are these people really going to the Court of Appeal? Mm. Important legal issues that were occasionally put to the nominees could not be answered. Wow. And then he went ahead to say that he got responses like they would learn on the job. So this is oh. the opinion of the NBA president, Mr. Lumi Diapata, according to the news on you know, the process of the screening of the members of the judiciary who have been put forward now. Hmm. Well, are we not oh, in I trouble? Part of the uh, God will help us. But tell me, you are a lawyer. What do you think um, will be the likely uh, ripple effect of this? Okay, so when I look at this, the NJC really, to just say it, what it is, is the NJC is the National Judicial Council and they are in charge of, you know, the appointment of judges still needs to be ratified by the president, mm -hmm. right? But they are the ones that do the screening process. And in this case, if the NJC is putting forward candidates, it's important that the candidates should be the most competent mm -hmm. based on merit because every process of putting them forward is going to eventually, you know, affect their decisions because they are the ones who are going to go to the appeal court and write mm -hmm. to the Supreme Court and make decisions. So it's really important that, you know, the, we put our best foot forward in the judiciary because they are the ones that are going to make our decisions going forward so it, okay. it's very important okay that we get it right here all right so let me quickly take my story because we run out of time um it says nigeria banks telecos will rake uh, rake in over half a billion naira on the new ussd charge you know i had taken the story on tuesday <laughs> and i said usd instead of ussd um so um that's what the this person is writing and saying that banks will rake in that a new charge has angered customers and alarmed advocates of the financial inclusion but it's also good news you know for the nigerian um banks and the telcos that they will be the ones that will profit from this so i'm just wondering well, are they I not think, charging I us already source, i think the source needs to get it right because this charge that we're talking about is session fees it's not uh, it's not um transfer fee so it's not really the bank's money it's a who is providing the platform is a telco hmm. so for that service that they provide um, you, they need to pay for it. And mm -hmm. I think that that's where all the talk comes about the 42 billion being in debt or not being in debt. Mm. This money would mostly be charged, would be charged by the telcos mm. for you using the platform to do business. Yeah. The banks would only continue to charge what they have been charging, which is your transfer fees, you know, uh, which you, they already pay. Mm. So I think, I think somehow that this information is misleading. Uh, maybe more, more money for the telcos, but not more money for the banks. Nothing has changed on the side of the banks. Really? And I All stand right, so to be corrected. For those that do not understand, um, the USSD means unstructured supplementary service data. Right, so it's offered. The, these are services offered by banks for instant cash withdrawals. Yes, on your on your feature phone. So mm. you don't need to have data to carry out a USSD transaction. You just dial a code, and mm. then payment can be done. And another blow. So I, I know we are out of time. Let me just quickly chip this in: is that the ripple effect really would be on financial inclusion because mm. by the time people begin to sense that it's expensive which may not really be to transact fair that it now begins to push people back to using cash and every other thing to avoid cost and the people that which this was initiative why this was, was trying before. to reach mm. to you know limit the cash that we have in circulation and begin to build trust in the it's system a, begin to destroy so it becomes it. a futile effort yeah so i i think that i am hoping that in the future things will be done and clarity will be provided on this absolutely all right so we're going to take a very short break when we return we'll be discussing the future of money in this digital world. Stay with us, we'll be right back.